now we look at limits when it is applied to exponential. So in this case, if you find that we have limit as x approaches zero of exponential to power x minus one over x, this will be equals to one. So with this one now, you might ask why is it one again? And by direct substitution, you may find that exponential to power zero minus one all over zero, you may find that any number is to power zero, regardless if it is exponential or cos or trigonometry will be one minus one over zero, you find it zero over zero. So in this case, you may find that it will be hard for you to know why is it one, because by direct substitution, we are getting zero over zero. So in this case, you have, you can apply what you call air hospital rule, where we differentiate first of all, and differentiating you get exponential to power x, because we said when you differentiate exponential to power x in our previous class, we said you get exponential to power x times the derivative of this power, and when you differentiate x is one, so it is, to remain the it is exponential to power x times one, minus zero, or over one, because when you differentiate x, you get one. So again now, when you apply limit as x approaches zero, we have exponential to power zero all over one. So we get one over one, which is one. That's why we are saying limit as x approaches zero of this one will be one. The issue there is where we apply now the air hospital rule. We are applying what we call air hospital rule. You'll be able to get that one. So now let's take a first example on the same. So here we have our first example, example one. We have limit as x approaches zero of this one. Again, just like we had cos x minus one over x, we must play with our number so that we have exponential to power x minus one all over x. So here, we must make this one to be the same as this one, seven x. So in this case, we multiply both sides with seven. So we have seven exponential seven x minus one all over seven times four x. We multiply numerator and denominator with this seven, so we will have limit as x approaches zero of seven, exponential to power seven x minus one, all over four, seven x. So in this case, I have interchanged seven and four, it's just the same because it will be the same as 28 x, 28 x. So this is the same as seven over four, limit as x approaches zero, exponential seven x minus one, all over seven x. Again, this one, we said here, it will be equals to one. If you have exponential to power x minus one over x, as you see, this is the same as this one now. So we assume it's just like one value. So in that case, we have seven over four times one. So my answer will be seven over four. That's how we solve our limits when we apply what we call exponential. Now let's look at the situation where we have because with this one now I know, even though I manipulate with my data, you can be able to solve that one. Let's look at the situation where you have a combination of trigonometry and exponential now. How do we solve that one? Now, how do we solve this one? This is our example two. How do we solve this one? We know that if we had sign two x over two x, you could be able to say it is one. And if you had this one over x, you could be able to say it is one. So how do we solve this one? In this case, we multiply numerator because when you solve directly, you may find that it will not be, you will not be able to get answer because this will be sine zero, sine zero, which will be zero. And this one will be exponential to power zero, which is one minus one. So you have zero over zero. So in this case, we will not be able to solve with direct substitution. So in this case, what we do, we try to make this one over x and this one we try to make over two x. So in this case, I may multiply both sides, both numerator and denominator with the two. 2x. So in this case, it will be sine 2x. I divide, that is poly. Now, I divide both sides with the 2x, all over 2x, all over exponential to power x minus 1, all over 2x. I have divided both sides, numerator and denominator, with the 2x. So in this case, this is the same as limit sine 2x over 2x. In this case, I have applied the quotient rule, where we can split limit numerator and denominator, all over limit as x approaches zero, here we can have one over two, 
then exponential to power x minus 1 all over x. So I think that one is very clear. I may bring my constant, the constant row where we had. So this one is limit as x approaches 0 of sine 2x all over 2x all over half limit as x approaches 0 of exponential to power x minus 1 all over x. So in this case, we say the limit of sine x over x will be 1. So we have 1 all over half times 1. So in this case, you'll be able to get the answer will be 2 because it is 1 over half and the answer will be 2. Now, we can take the last example. So this is our example 3. And in our example 3, we have a bit complicated equation. How do we solve this one? There might people who might think is, this one is very hard, but I would like you approach each case independent. That is numer numerator and denominator. So in this case, we know this one, if we make over 6x, we'll be able to solve that one. So why don't we divide in both cases? Numerator and denominator, we divide with the 6. So we have limit as x approaches 0. We divide with the 6x, so it will be exponential 6x minus 1 all over 6x. The same case applies to the denominator. We'll have x sine cubed x all over 6x. So we have divided the numerator and denominator with the 6x. So in this case, we have limit. We may separate limit. Exponential to power 6x minus 1 all over 6x. Then the same case, we split the denominator. But you find that this x and this x will cancel out. So we have 1 over 6 limit as x approaches 0. I'll have sine cubed x. With this one now, you can be able to see we have divided numerator and denominator with the 6x. So this one we have left the way we have, it remains the way it is because we know that one will be able to get it is 1. Again, with 6x, this x and this x will cancel out. So we have 1 over 6. And I have brought that 1 over x based on our constant row of limits. In our first class on, on limits, we said you can bring this 1 over x, then you remain with limit as x approaches that one. So in this case, it is simple now. It will ha I'll have limit as x approaches 0. In my numerator, I'm done with solving that one. 6x minus 1, all over 6x. But in numerator, 1 over 6 limit as x approaches 0. I know this one is the same as sine x, sine x, sine x. So in this case, I want to divide this with x, with this x, with x, so that I can be able to get a, a clear answer. So in this case, let me solve this one is 1, all over, 1 over 6 limit, as x approaches 0. So here I can make this one to be sine x over x, sine x over x, sine x over x. But to substitute this one now, I must multiply with x cubed so that this x and this x and this x will cancel out. So I will not have done anything in my, when it comes to my denominator. So what happens with that one now? I can be able to solve that one easily. How do I solve this one? Now I have x cubed. How do I solve this one? So I will have 1 over 1 over 6. So this one, limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, times limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed. So limit this, all of this one is denominator. So this one I'll have 1 over 1 over 6. So limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1 times 1, times 1, again, we have, we have three cases, then times 0. Because we have limit x, x approaches 0 of x cubed, it will be 0. So I have 1 over 1 over 6 times 0, which will be 0. So 1 over 0 will be infinite, because we know any number dividing by, we divide with 0, we will have an infinite number. And this one will lead now to our next subtopic when it comes to limits where we shall look at infinites. Now, where we have infinites applied in our limits, where we have infinites, like the case we have now, 1 over 0 is infinite. So let's watch our last 
topic on limits which will be where we have infinite in limits.